Hey, it's Yazi. I should have probably made this video yesterday, though. I was sick for the past few days, so I wanted to give my voice a bit of a rest before I made another video. But as you can see by the title, I'm going to go over every single draft or sealed leader that you could potentially play. Basically, explain what I think are the better heroes to play as. If you don't know what draft is, draft is you get three packs and then you pass, you take one card, pass it around. You make a 30 card deck, while sealed is you get given six packs and you make a deck out of those six packs. 30 card deck with 20 health hero as well. So if you really want to get into draft and sealed, I really feel like warrior is the strongest hero to play. It has the most versatility as far as all, all of its commons and everything go. And because the whole deck basically revolves around attack reaction cards, the amount that they're blocking for really is just based on how much they think you're going to hit with. So it's a very guess and gamble kind of way to play when you're versing your warrior. I've seen most draft places that have been running in the area, most of the warriors have been topping, and every now and then an odd brute or an odd guardian. So I'll go straight into the cards. So we'll be looking at all the common cards, because common cards are the ones that you're going to see most when you play draft and sealed. And the first one you're going to be looking at is Biting Blade. Now Biting Blade is a cycle card as well as every other common and rare card. It costs 2 to play and gives your weapon buff a 1 to 3, and then an also additional one if they used a card from their head to block with. It's okay, I'd like pick it up if you don't see any of the other attack reaction cards, but it is a very strong card. Iron Song Response is definitely the card you'll want to be picking up if you're playing Warrior. It gives you a 1 to 3 attack, though if they don't block with anything from their hand, you can't use it, as the reprise effect is to gain that damage. Sharpened Steel is another really good card as well, as it's basically Iron Song Response, but as an action card, so you play it beforehand. And then you can't forget Driving Blade. Driving Blade will give your weapon go again, so if they choose not to defend on the first one, you can always swing again and then just hit, put everything in on the second attack. Being able to roll Warrior and then manage to start accruing points on your Dawn Blade is so crucial to play the deck. By just getting one additional attack during the early game, gives you enough to roll into maybe a five attack in the late game as well. Unless your opponent is just putting their entire hand down to block it. But if you start losing the aggro, but you did get your opponent down quick enough, Steel Blade Shunt is a rare card, and it's something that every player should be worried about when they're versus Warrior, when they have really low health. Because if you just defend with two of these against a weapon attack, you could deal two damage to your opponent. And that itself is very strong, especially in the late game. And I'll be looking at one other super card, which is Route. Route, I believe, is the strongest card ever printed so far. And the main reason is that it's basically two mana to deal six damage. It targets a card that they've blocked with and adds it back to the opponent's hand. So you're swinging for about nine damage. If you manage to get this card within your openings, you should definitely play Warrior. As Route, I have seen so many games won with. So how to really beat Warrior? I feel like the best way to beat a Warrior is to kind of push them very hard during the early game so they can't get stacks on their Dawn Blades so they start rolling enough damage where you can't defend every single attack. And then the other thing as well is pick up every single generic or class defense reaction as that way you can see how much you're going to have the gauge to defend against. But if you're too scared of playing Warrior or too scared to verse it, you should definitely pick up Bravo. Now, Bravo the Guardian has some of the best defensive techniques that has been given to this game so far. And the first one is Stonewall Confidence. Now, Stonewall Confidence does come in common, so it's a very strong card. And you, every single iteration of it, the blue, re yellow, and red, all have their benefits. When you play Bravo, your entire deck is basically going to be massive attacks that cost so much. So all your Stonewall Confidences, most of the cards in your hand will always proc off it. It puts your opponent in a really weird position if they want to push for extra damage or not. Though, if the Stonewall Confidence is up, it's very hard to. But we'll look at the other Crush cards. The two main crush cards you're wanting to be picking up is Deliberate and Buckling Blow. Both of these have the most damage potential as far as all the commons go. Both of them do cost 4, while Buckling Blow has a really neat effect where it can neg your opponent's equipment. So if your opponent wants to defend against this, they're basically going to have to use their equipment straight away. If not, it's basically dealing an extra damage to your opponent, as that's what equipment with armor basically is and deliberate next to attack off the first attack of your opponent. For some decks, that's all the attacks that they really have. But negging two is basically ensuring that you're not going to be 
having to defend with all cards in your hand. Cartilage Crush and Crush Confidence are your next Crush cards that you'll want, be wanting to pick up. Cartilage Crush makes it so the next attack action card that they use costs an extra one. Unfortunately, this isn't for weapons, but that's okay. And Crush Confidence will kill your opponent's hero abilities for the turn. So that means no more Intimidates off Brutes and no extra weapon attacks off Warrior. I personally can see Guardian winning some events if enough Warriors are rolled into playing in Sealed or Draft, though it's a very gambly kind of way to play. Now Brute always sits in this really weird spot, as a lot of people while versing Brute don't know what to expect when they're versing them. Brute has some really weird versatility as far as the generic cards that work with it as well, and it seems like Brute just always sits in this really back foot spot. The main card you'll be wanting to pick up are Red and Yellow Pack Hunts. These cost 2 to play and then they come with Intimidate as well, hidden for 5 and 6. You don't have to discard a card when you play this one, which is very strong in sealed and draft as you're able to defend with more cards in your hand when you play this card. As you can just pitch a 2 cost and then play this. While any other card you use, you're going to have to pitch, play the card and then discard a card as well. Savage Swing is your strongest hitting uh, 1 cost attack. In every single iteration of it, I think has its uses. The blue one you're able to just pitch with if you want, though it is hitting for 5 as well, and you're able to snap your Snapdragon Scalers off this so you can attack again, and usually with that you usually just attack with your weapon. Wrecker Romp is the biggest attack when it comes to all the common cards, but though it does come with that drawback of having to pay 2 mana to play this card. Awakening Bellow and Primeval Bellow, now these are very hard cards to play with. Primeval Below makes it so that you have to basically swing it with your, well rely on swinging with your weapon. And the main reason is that if you discard the card that you want to attack with, you may not have the amount of pitch value to swing with the, uh, the other attack that you could potentially hit with. I personally don't like it too much as swinging with weapon is just usually going to be met by a warrior using Steel Blade Shunt and then hitting you back with it as well. While Wakening Bellow, it does cost 1 to play, so you have to pitch first then play this, which in some cases isn't too bad, but if you're on the back foot, you basically will only have about 2 cards in your hand to play with, and this attack doesn't buff your weapon, so you can't just play this and then swing with your weapon and gain the benefits off. And the last card that I want to look at is Reckless Swing. It has a lot of potential to just cheese out games. And it's very easy to set up that I've found as you can just defend with all the cards that you need to defend with except one 6 attack card and then just play this and deal 2 damage to your opponent. Not a lot of times you'll see your opponent go down to 2 health or 1 health, though those games you can just cheese it out by playing this card. Brute is a very easy deck to overcome when you verse them. The best way to do it is just keep slamming them with attacks. You may need to take some damage so you can gain enough momentum to hit them back, but once you get them on that back foot, it's really hard for a Brute to step back into the aggro and push for extra damage. But if you want to go into an event and basically be the underdog, I feel like Ninja's the way to go. All their cards basically just have go again, so you're just relying on dealing just as much damage as you can as possible, as long as you can make your chain go. Surging Strike Red costs 2 to play and has 5 attack, and I think it's the strongest card on its own when it comes to value, as your opponent either defends with 2 cards from their hand, or they defend with 1 card from their hand, take 2 damage, and then you're able to attack again. And usually when you attack again, you probably just swing with your Kodachis. When I've played draft i haven't used his hero ability as much though if there's one card that you want to be searching out it's open the center if you play this before a head jab play this it gains dominate and go again and one extra attack i've seen so many ninja plays being if it constructed or draft or sealed just being ended with an open center when they have like four or three health left as far as the supers that go for this class there aren't any really good ones to mention, as it's going to be very RNG-ish to get all those effects off. It's better to just base your deck around as much go again cards as you can and extend your chain out as much as possible, and to then potentially swing with Razor Reflex with a weapon attack. That's that I've found the most beneficial way to play Ninja, but that's just my testing. Now all the generic cards have a lot of synergy with all these heroes, You've got the Nimbleism package, which works wonders in Ninja and Brute. Now, most of the Brute attacks cost one to play, 
So by being able to play Nimbleism and then let's say a Reckless Swing, you can buff your attack off that and then play Nimble Strike the following turns and then gain go again on that as well. I found while playing Brute this is probably one of the better ways to go. Though you can go the Slogism package and rather than playing Slogism you can just defend with it and then play your Regurgitating Slog on the top as a finisher. Scar for Scar is a card that can go in literally de any deck and has been the main win con for most decks as far as tempo goes. You'll be wanting to pick up as much Pummel and Razor Reflex as you can as these are the little extra chip damages that any class can use. Flock of the Feather Walkers is probably the best generic card to slot into Warrior as this will allow your weapon to again go again for the next attack that you use after Flock of the Feathers. It's that little extra chip damage and able to buff your weapon as well. And the last two cards that I want to look at is Sink Below and Unmovable. These are definitely cards that you should be looking to pick up as I feel like most of the meta is just going to be rolling towards Warrior. Being able to gauge how much damage they're going to deal to you after they use their attack reaction is probably the best way to verse a Warrior. But yeah, that's so far my experiences with playing Draft. I wish I just did upload this last night, though I did come along across a, a lot of complications with my voice and then with my equipment as well. By the time that this comes out, probably the Auckland event has came to close. And I'll be calling it now that probably a warrior did win this event. I'll also be making another video tomorrow, so definitely check that one out. And I'll see you in the next video.